All right. I've got three layers already layered up, but I'm not going to try to cut them out perfectly yet. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of a halo. Those first three layers, which make up my background, those are soft edge transitions. Now I'm moving into the middle ground and I want cleaner focus. I want harder edges. So next is 3A, this one. If I bring that over and layer it on top, maybe I want to flip it so I can Command T. Even without rasterizing it, I can flip it and I can place it maybe like this. I can even grow it. So I'm not sure I'm going to want to, but we'll see. Let's move it there for now. My sketch is a guide, but it shouldn't limit what I can do. So I'll place it there. So instead of trying to softly erase out this sky, because I've got nice clean resolution on this mountain, thanks to Pixabay, there's a few ways I could try to erase it. But the, the most direct and the way I'm going to recommend for right now is just using your lasso tool and doing a rough cutout where you're leaving plenty of overlap with the layer behind. So I can select all of that and then delete. And it's not able to be deleted because it hasn't been rasterized yet. So I could rasterize it. Or I could do the opposite, which is select the inverse and then duplicate it, Command J, which saves me the step of needing to rasterize. And then I see it with that mountain range. And I think, well, that looks kind of odd. Maybe I'll flip, flip it again, Command T. Right click, flip horizontal. Yeah, that's, that's making a little bit more sense. I think that works a little bit better. Okay. Now, I could go in with my eraser and again, do a soft, 100% opaque, but soft edged eraser transitioning, which helps to blend everything together. But I can also just leave it right now with that, that rough collar and leave the, the fine cutouts for after I've done some, some basic color adjustments and lighting adjustments, which will be the first thing we do next class. Because the danger here of using the soft eraser too much, especially at 100%, is I might accidentally cut into the mountain that I want to be really clean and opaque. So if I do get rid of the super hard edges, which is usually what I'll do, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I don't accidentally mess with that mountain. When you do a 0% soft edge on your, on your eraser brush, it will echo beyond the actual tool circle, which can be really helpful for blending, but dangerous when you don't want to lose content. All right, so there we are so far. I've got lots of different color stories going on here. But the placement's working. It's informed by my sketch. And now I get to rough cut some of these foreground elements in. So far, I have background and some middle ground. A nice open plane to work with. So bringing in some of these foreground elements, like this snow melt. All 
right? And this cliffside rock, which is a really nice foreground element, very dramatic. So I can decide what I want to use from these. And I don't think I want to use this, this cliff edge. I just want to use this rock, this foreground. So I'm just going to roughly select around it. I have a zero pixel feather, which means everything's super sharp edged. But I want plenty of overlap. And then I'm just going to duplicate it, Command J. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Now I am. Command J. And then I can delete the smart layer behind it, or the smart object. Now I have a rough cutout, and I can think about where I want to place this. I want to have it overlap a little bit. Maybe right there. And now my last element of my five so far is this snow melt, which I want more in the middle ground. So I'm going to push it behind that extreme foreground. And maybe I will flip it. So Command T, flip horizontal. See how that works. I'm going to kind of line it up with those mountains a little bit. And now these are the basic elements of my sketch, though I swapped the arch for this, this melting snow. And so what I'm going to do, I'll rasterize that so I can erase away from it. But I'm just going to erase... Actually, I don't think I will erase right now because there's a lot of transitioning that will have to happen and I might find some other elements. So what I'm going to do is move all of this at this size on top of my sketch. So to do that, I'm going to select all the layers that go on top of my sketch and then move them all as a whole, like so. And then I can move my guides because there's no reason to shrink these to match my sketch. If I have the resolution to keep it at full size, keep it at full size. But I'm going to redraw my edges to what I think it should be. And now that I have that new framing, that helps me to make different decisions about how I, I work with this material. So maybe I need a, a different foreground element, but I think I can transition this ice right into those mountains, which would be a fun exercise to do. And so this is often what happens. You have a sketch intention and you try it, but then it's just not as, as interesting or as powerful as you want. So you might go back to your reference images and think, what's a better foreground element than that. And I look and see what I have. And I have things like this, but it's a little devoid of color and, and lighting. So at this point, I might go back to Pixabay and I might do a search for something like ice crystals, which I pulled up. or for glacial forms, glaciers. I'm going to open them in a new tab to review how you can get high quality source material. But I want something that's extremely in the foreground. So we have this strong rock and mountainside here. Looks like it's part of the Matterhorn. I have this really strong glacier shape here. And of course, you can spend a lot of time trying to find the right reference. I've got 36 pages I could go through of glaciers. Not that one. Not that one. Let's play with this. we do the largest download. I've already logged in with my email. It goes to my downloads folder. 
but I want to move that as soon as it's downloaded, I want to move that into my assignment folder. And then I'm in business. So don't think you're stuck with whatever first reference that you sketched from. You're trying to make the best possible landscape. So I'm going to bring that in. Size it a little bit, play with its placement, and I'm just going to do a rough cutout of it. It's also lit in a way that makes it very easy to select out with that black silhouette behind it. And now I just have a lot of color matching and lighting to do at the beginning of next class before I do my refined cutouts. So I'm going to duplicate it and then delete the source layer. Also, it's very helpful to do organic things because you can do things like squish them, where man-made things like bridges and buildings, it's a little bit harder to distort them and squish them and have them still be believable. So hitting Command-T, I can hold down Shift and I can actually change the proportions of it. I can even right click and I can warp it within reason. As long as I'm not making it too big, I can customize it. And maybe I want this to be behind this. So I will figure that out, how I want those to interact. OK, so that is a good place to be for next class. I have rough cutouts and placements of all of my elements. And we will pick up from there. So what do I do? I have to save my work. I can just hit Command S, save it as a PSD, make sure it's in your folder along with your reference images. And then when you pack up to leave class, just make sure that folder goes from the desktop, which is right here, into your documents folder, which is not your downloads folder. And that's where it will be kept safe. All right.